and figgy pudding. Does it for you? Like, I've never had figgy pudding. I don't know what figgy pudding is, but I hear that song and I'm like, I won't go till I get some. So anyway, Christmas spirit, that's what we're talking about. That's what Candace kicked us off last week, that message on the, the spirit of generosity and, and, and just the bare minimum that is expected. You know, uh, nobody likes Christmas to be the bare minimum. Christmas is about the extra, the extraordinary, the excessive, the especially important, the powerful, and the magical. That's Christmas, right? That, that mentality. And, and a lot of us, love Christmas, right? They just love that that moment. I have not been that person for some time. I don't know what it is about Christmas, but it has become the single most frustrating holiday on my calendar. Maybe it is for you. And here's why I think it is. Walmart and Mariah Carey. Those are the two problems. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that song that all I want for, I'm not going to sing it again. All I want for Christmas is you. That song, it comes on the air and I'm immediately done. Christmas is over. I'm done. And it comes on like in November and Walmart starts decorating in September and it's just too much. It's too much. And I say that because I realize I'm becoming a crotchety old adult. At 33 years of age, I can officially finally say it, I am an adult. And adults are grumps when it comes to Christmas. And I was thinking about it this week. Here's why. As a kid, what do you love about Christmas, right? You love the Christmas lights. You love the Christmas cookies. You love the Christmas presents. You love the Christmas movies. You love the Christmas music. And as as a child, all of those things are magical and special and awesome. But as an adult, you have to hang the Christmas lights. You have to make the Christmas cookies. You have to watch the Christmas movies. You got to listen to the Christmas music. You got to buy and wrap the presents. As an adult, Christmas just means more work. As a child, Christmas means more fun, more celebration, more joy. So today, I want to talk about looking at Christmas through the eyes of a child. And as many of you will know, Jesus told us to live like children, and we'll get to that a little bit, but in this Christmas Spirit series, Candace kicked us off uh, by watching the Jim Carrey version of uh, Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol, and originally, I did not like that version of the movie. It is creepy, it is CG, it is uncomfortable. Um, It just puts me off. The Uncanny Valley, it's too much. You know what I'm talking about? That that weird Jim Carrey face that just doesn't work. I, I don't like it. But in preparation, I cut together the video, so I watched the whole version, and there's this really cool thing that happens to Jim Carrey. He can barely walk, and he's so grumpy, and he's so upset, and then the, the spirits, they, they teach him about Christmas, and he, he transforms. Not just his generosity transforms. His physical experience, his laughable nature, his overwhelming joy, all of those things transform. And, and you, you, he starts cracking jokes. He actually, like, rides on the back of a car. It, it's crazy how much he transforms. And as I watched that, I thought, you know what? Christianity should, should transform us like this. If somebody knew you before you were saved, the minute they meet you after, they should be like, there's something different about you. You could not meet Scrooge and not realize something was different. So I want to talk not about the spirit of generosity like Candace did, which is the, the linchpin, the heart of the spirit of Christmas, but I want to talk about that other spirit of Christmas, the spirit of joy. The spirit of joy. The spirit of joy is best embodied by one of my favorite, if not maybe one of the only two Christmas movies I actually enjoy, and that movie, people have been guessing all week, is Elf. Elf. You guys like Elf? You know, the Will Ferrell 2000 comedy about a human who was raised in Santa's workshop, and and he thinks he's an elf his whole life, and he's taught how to be an elf, and and he's like six foot tall, while all the elves are like Jason Height, and and he's got this weird experience that no one can, can understand, and because of that, when he finally goes to the human world, he sees things differently. He's got a whole different lens. His lens is joy. He sees the world with joy. That's all he understands. Nothing else, just joy. He sticks to the four food groups, right? Candy, candy corn, maple syrup, and candy canes, like the four food groups. That's what all he eats, and and that's essentially my diet as well. But 
We need to see the world the way he sees it. So I want to show a few clips from this movie, some lessons we can learn from Buddy the Elf. So this first clip is Buddy learning how to be an elf. It's the code of the elves. Now, before we learn how to build the latest in extreme graphic chipset processors, let's recite the code of the elves, shall we? Number one. Treat every day like Christmas. Number two. There's room for everyone on the nice list. Number three. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. The best way to spread Christmas cheer, singing loud for all to hear. The code of the elves. It, it's something that, like, he learned his whole life, and it became who he is. There's something about a code, a creed, a mantra, a mentality, an idea that we can hold on to, memorize, and live. So the code of the elves is how Buddy lives his life. He, he understands to treat every day like Christmas. This is another reason I've, in the past, not really enjoyed Christmas. This year, I'm actually really getting a lot out of Christmas. We're doing an advent calendar with our kids. We decorated two weeks early. Um, there's all kinds of Christmas candy and stuff at our house. I'm enjoying it, but traditionally, I don't like it because you put all of this work and effort into one day. Why? Why? Why put everything into one day? Why not live more of your life with that mentality of generosity and that spirit of joy? So, so Buddy lives with the, the elf code. Rule one, live every day like Christmas. I want to change this elf code to be a Christian code. Not a Christmas code, a Christian code. I want you to, maybe you're taking notes right now. You, you can write down the three elf rules and the next to them, I want you to put the three Christian rules. The, the first rule, live every day like Christmas, I want you to treat every day like Sunday. There's this, there's this thing that people do. They'll walk in a church. They, maybe they, they haven't been to church for years, and they're talking to me, a pastor, and they'll say something, and, and then they'll be like, oh, I shouldn't say that. I'm in church. And I want to say to them, what, why, if you shouldn't say it in church, it, you shouldn't say it. Why do you need the in church? You shouldn't say it. If you shouldn't do it not in church, you shouldn't do it in, like, just Live every day like you're in church in front of your pastor. Live every day like you're standing in front of your Savior because he's always with you. He's always there. Make church everywhere. Treat every day like it's Sunday. Treat every day like it's the holy day. Treat every day special and important. And, and wake up in the morning going, today is the Lord's day. I will give it to him and I'm going to make it count. That's the way believers should live. That's the way we should embody the, the spirit of being a Christian. Second rule that the elves live by, there's room for everyone on the nice list. As Christians, we should say, all are welcome here. I hate hearing stories where people are like, I just didn't feel welcome in church. That wasn't my experience growing up. As a matter of fact, I've told my story plenty of times. My family was saved because my extremely handicapped sister, um, my parents were afraid she'd never walk, she'd never talk, she'd never do anything. They began praying for miracles. They saw miracles and they got saved. They got saved watching 700 Club on TV so they didn't have a church. And, and I'm like five or six and they start trying out churches. Now here's the thing about having a severely handicapped child. She is distracting. In the middle of a service, she might yell or cry. She might get up from her seat. She might drag my mom around. And a lot of the churches my parents went to, they did not feel welcomed. They did not feel safe. They did not feel as if it was a good place to be. Now, as a child, I didn't encounter that or understand that. But very quickly, they found a church. It was called Washington Assembly of God. It was right in our hometown. And, and they went and they felt welcome. They felt accepted. No matter how distracting my sister was, at the end of the service, people came up and they said, your daughter is just so sweet. Not, can you maybe go out to the lobby with her? They were there for her and they connected with her. And so my family always felt welcomed. I, I never encountered a church that wasn't welcoming. I came here my, for my second church and I felt welcomed and I've stayed here. So two churches, both welcoming, good experience. But I hear stories about people who feel like 
they're, they're too bad, or they're, they're, they're too simple, or they're too far, or they don't dress right, or they won't look right. It's why I still wear a hat on stage, even though it might offend some, because everyone should feel welcome here. There's room for everyone in his church. All are welcome here. That's how we should live, and that's how we should live our lives, not just the way our church should operate. Are people welcome in your home? Do you, do you invite people over? Do you, are you a part of a home group? Do you host individuals? Are you welcoming? There's room for everyone in the church. Elves feel there's room for everyone on the nice list. There's room for everyone in Christ's church. And then the final rule of the elves, the code of the elves, we all know it, we all love it. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. This one is tough for me. Um, when I sing loud for all to hear, I'm not so much spreading cheer as I am making people laugh. They're two different things, and I need to understand that. But I have a story about this because I inherit, I came by my lack of singing talent naturally. My father is also a horrible singer. And he so loves my mother that at their 30th anniversary, he spent a couple weeks learning the lyrics to a song. Um, it's, it's the song, All of Me Wants All of You, every uh, curve and imperfection, every whatever, that, that, that beautiful song. And he, he took some time, and in front of 40 people at their anniversary party, he sang that song to her. It was awful. Really, really bad. But everyone was just touched. Because it didn't matter to him that people might laugh. He wanted to express his love and affection. Now, I don't want to change this one into the best way to spread Christianity is singing loud. Because, again, that's not the best way for me. I sing when I worship my God. But I don't think anyone has ever been convinced to become a Christian because they heard my cat call on a Sunday morning. But I do believe that individuals are attracted to our Savior when they see us living loud. Now, I'm not saying yelling at them. I'm saying living a life filled with joy. The best way to sp spread Jesus' joy is living a life that all can hear. They want to hear the way you're living. They want to see the way you're living. They want to experience. They, they don't want you to be hiding. They want to, what is it like to be a Christian? And then they look at the way you live. And then they determine whether or not they'd be a Christian. A quote often told in church services, Gandhi was proclaimed, I would be a Christian if it weren't for Christians. What a shame. Live a life loudly for the Lord. That's how we have our code. We, one, treat every day as a Sunday. Two, we make room for everyone in his church. And three, we live a life loud for the Lord. We live a life people would want to emulate. And when we do that, we become something special. We become like a little child. Have you ever noticed kids, that they, they love playing with other kids. They, they're ready to, to play and share. They make room. They, they sing loudly. This week, uh, my daughter was painting at the, the dining room table while I was doing some work, working from home. And she just started singing, making up words to a song. And, and I videotaped it, and it's hilarious. And I'm going to show it to her boyfriend when she starts dating in high school, and it'll be great, but she's just sitting there singing and singing, making up words. They don't care. They're, they're beautiful singers. They live their lives unashamed, and it's wonderful, and we want to live like little children. So Jesus actually told us this in Matthew 18, uh, verses 1 through 4. About that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? This is the mind of an adult I'm just saying. Uh, an adult says, uh, am, I, am I better? Am I, am, I, am I grander? Am I more special? Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like a little child, you will never, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So Anyone who becomes as humble, that's important, who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Joy requires humility. Joy requires humility. You see, kids are way quicker to fall in love with Christmas because they know 
they know we got it. I, they, can't, they can't orchestrate it. They can't set it up. They're, they're humble. They understand that dad's getting the Christmas presents, that mom's baking the Christmas cookies, that grandma's going to show up with all the gifts, and then mom and dad will have to find a place to store all the gifts. Kids get that. They, they understand that, that dad's got me. They're humble in their understanding that someone else is taking care of them. As a matter of fact, humility is demonstrated in the way we see Buddy live his life. Buddy um, travels from the North Pole through the, the gumdrop forest and then through the Lincoln Tunnel, and he enters New York, and this is how he sees New York City. Time it rains, it rains, panthers from heaven. Shoo do be. Don't you know each cloud contains panthers from heaven? Shoo be do be. You'll find your fortune falling all over town. Be sure that your umbrella is up, 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 upside Thank down you. and trade them for a package of sunshine and ravioli. Macaroni. If you want the thing you love, you did it. Congratulations. World's best cup of coffee. Great job, everybody. It's great to meet you. Hi. Now come over here, boy. Sam. And every time it rains, it rains. And don't you know it's confident? Every time it rains, it rains. And don't you know it's confident? Sit. All over town, all over town, all over town. Thank you. 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 There is no pride in that person. <laughs> he, he, he walks up and thinks the, the gum on the street is a gift for him. He, he sees a turnstile door and knows it's a toy designed for him to play with. The, the, the lines on the street are built for him to jump and skip. That's humility. It, it's not pride. It's, it's humility. It's everything is built in a way that all can use it. It's not, this is mine and I take it. It's, it's humility. It's, it's joy. It's, it's unadulterated fun. Now, when Jesus said, that you must be like a child, I think it's important to make it clear. This does not mean we think and reason like children. It doesn't mean we're, we're fools like Buddy is often portrayed in that movie of elves and silliness and comedy, and, and he gets to be Will Ferrell just being hilarious. It's, it, we're, we're called to not be foolish. We're called to be humble and joyful. You see, the thing about adults is, is adults, we quickly become jaded and disenchanted. They're, the magic of Disney is lost on an adult because we know it's not magic, it's marketing. The, the, the beauty of Christmas is lost on an adult because we know those, those twinkling lights took two hours for somebody to untangle. But to a child, they're different. An adult, they hold grudges, they harbor fears, they stay angry, they refuse to forgive, they lose hope quickly and refuse to change anything. But a child... A child holds tenderness of conscience, openness and emotions. Feelings are expressed quickly. They have creativity and imagination. My son builds things out of cardboard boxes every day. Every day it looks like a cardboard box to me, but he knows it's a rocket ship or an airplane or a car or a snowboard. He just sees it because he's got imagination and wonder and awe. He has joy. He has a spirit of joy because joy requires the humility of a child. They go hand in hand. 
If you want to live and enter the kingdom of heaven, you must be humble, lacking the pride of an adult and holding on to the humility of a child. Here's the thing. Children love Christmas because they know their dad has got them. He's going to take care of them. Adults, we should live every day like Christmas because we know our Father in heaven has got us. He's going to take care of us. He'll provide all our needs. Generosity becomes easy when you know God's going to provide. Joy becomes celebratory when you know your Savior is for you and not against you. We should live these lives with overwhelming joy. You see, it's easy for Buddy to live a life of joy because he knows Santa is real. Why don't we draw that same parallel ourselves? It's easy for me to live joyfully because I know my God is real. I am humble enough to admit that he is greater than me and he will take care of me. He's going to bake the Christmas cookies. He's going to put up the lights. None of our lights can compare to the majesty of a sunrise. It's beautiful and miraculous. And our God made it for us. Why don't we live with that kind of joy? Why don't we see the world the way a child sees the world? When we have that kind of joy... By humbling ourselves, we can live the way Jesus lived because God humbled himself. Christmas is about God humbling himself, becoming human and bringing joy to the world. He was willing to humble himself for that. He didn't come down with pride. He entered into a manger. He stepped into a stable. He lived a life of poverty so we could have access to the power of the Holy Spirit. Live with joy then. Don't don't begrudgingly become the Grinch or the Scrooge. I understand that, that I really don't like Christmas because it means all of the things that I said earlier, but this year I needed to choose a little joy. I needed to become like a child. Like it says in Matthew 18, uh, two and three, Jesus called a little child to him and he put the child among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins, and become as little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. I want to enter the kingdom of heaven. I need to be like the child. I need to have that joy and that humility. I need to hold on to it because when I hold on to grudges, when I'm quick to stay angry, when I am am all that way, I'm becoming like a jaded adult and I'm locking myself out of the kingdom. Now remember, I want to really be balanced here. This does not mean we embrace foolishness and we don't learn and we don't grow, but it does mean we hold on to humility. And when we hold on to that joy and that humility, Christmas, Christmas will only make us happy for a season. Have you ever seen a kid the day after Christmas? Oh, man, is it disheartening. Like, like when they've opened the last present on Christmas Day and the only thing left is a dinner and they're like, is that it? And you, you're a parent and you go, look at all the gifts. What do you mean? Is that it? Christmas makes us happy for a season, but Jesus keeps us joyful through the journey. Jesus keeps us joyful through the journey. We can hold on to that spirit of joy. We can humble ourselves and say, he's in control and I am ready to embrace it. I'm gonna run through New York eating gum off the street. Don't do that. Don't eat, don't eat that stuff. But when you have that kind of joy, you get to take the next step. You get to share that kind of joy. As a matter of fact, Buddy's infectious joy spread to someone else, and he showed someone else how to see the world through the eyes of an elf. Let's check out that clip. You look miraculous. So do you. Thank you. And what would you like to do? I, I got some ideas. I'm such a happy individual. The moment that you just, just reach out in front of you and, and, and take a sip. I wanna go play. Don't look. Hide and seek. I wanna go and bounce the moon well. just like a toy. It tastes like a crappy cup of coffee. <laughs> you <laughs> and I. It is a crappy like cup of coffee. No, it's the world's best cup of coffee. The trick is to not get your arm caught in the door. Also, never jump your life because then you'll get sick. You make me feel comfortable. You just jump in. You make me feel <laughs> there are songs to be sung. Wait, 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 w
There's a couple things in that clip I love. First off, he, he starts it by saying, you look miraculous. What a greeting. Like, we're always like, how you doing? What's up? You look miraculous. And then, then the end of the clip, when they're at the, the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree, and he just, wow, that awe and that, 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 that joy. A few years ago, I actually took my, my sister into New York uh, to see the, the, the Christmas tree in Rockefeller Center. And, and we, we spent the whole day in New York waiting until it was dark to see the tree for the first time. And it's pretty cold, so she's like shivering and not enjoying the cold. And we, we walk up to it, and she sees it, and she goes, is that it? And I went, what are you talking about? It's the biggest, most well-decorated Christmas tree in the world. And you said, is that it? And I realized, ah, my sister's an adult. She's seeing the eyes with this, this pride of expecting more. I, there should have been more. Where was the more? There's, there's not that humility of what a great and glorious thing. What, what, what beauty. What, you look miraculous. That mentality of everything is wonderful. That is joy. And joy like that is spread. It, it, it's, it's something that you get to spread. We get to spread joy. And that's what, what Buddy did. All of those silly things that nobody would think are special, a, a cup of coffee, a spinning door, skipping down the street and looking at the marketing displays, trying to sell things. He showed them through the eyes of a child and she saw the joy in his heart and it was shared. I was trying to think of a way to, to illustrate this, the, the, the joy that can be spread. And recently, I, I've started using uh, TikTok. It's just a, a time-wasting social networking app where the short videos are shared and, and you just constantly scroll through all these videos. And uh, I've been intentionally looking up these awesome theological debates on that app and, and things can get pretty heavy quickly. But, but one creator has been coming up on my suggested content more and more and more. And her name, maybe some of you will know her, maybe not by name, but by sight. Her name is Autumn Rose. She's this tiny little Puerto Rican girl who helps as a UPS driver helper on the holidays, and she is so overwhelmingly bubbly and joyful. She is just always chipper and cheerful, and she shares these videos daily just trying to make other people happy. And a few weeks ago, she talked about how she's so excited to start working for UPS again as a seasonal driver helper. This is actually a job I did one season to earn money to actually buy my wife an engagement ring. And, and I did that job, and it is a tough job. It's like constantly sprinting from truck to house and moving as quickly as you can because people buy a lot of stuff at Christmas. Who knew? Like, so the job of a driver helper is, is not a great job. It, it, it's tough work, and she was so excited to do it. And here's why she was excited. She said, they told me I might get the same driver I had last year. And he is the grumpiest person I know. And I'm so excited to just try to make his day better. What kind of craziness is that? I'm going to make a grumpy person happy. I'm telling you right now, that is not the way I would have felt. I had a fairly grumpy driver, not the grumpiest guy in the world, but I, I certainly wouldn't be excited to try to make him happier. I want him to make me happy. But she shows up. Every day, she asks, how you doing? And he'll like grump and moan, and then she finds a way to try to cheer him up. Her whole goal is to take the joy she has and spread it to him. And boy, does she have a fight. Like she wrestles and tries and thinks of creative ways, and she does silly things. Like a couple of days ago, she, she's like, I'm going to deliver this box as fast as I can. Oh. And like she slow-mo ran up to the house and came back, like just trying to find ways to, to spread joy to this guy. That should be our goal. In, in a year that has been described by some so eloquently as a dumpster fire, I think is what they're calling 2020, why are we not being the ones to spread joy? In a year where the, the political discussion became divisive at a way we've never seen before, why aren't we being the ones to spread joy? 
when, when masks were introduced, the goal of a mask was to stop the spread of a virus, right? But there was a, a consequence of that, right? When you have a big piece of fabric over your face, you can't, you can't see a smile. And joy becomes tougher. But that doesn't mean we stop. It means we should be all the more excited to find even greater ways to share joy. It isn't easy. It's exhausting. But Christ never told us Christianity would be easy. It's not simple. It's effort. We work to share the gospel by our actions, by our efforts. The spirit of joy should overwhelm us so that we can spread it. We don't want to become infectious with the disease. We want to become infectious with joy. Last week on Sunday afternoon, we had a discussion on the Freedom Valley Church prayer group about what the funniest gifts you could get for $20 are. And it was a blast. And people were recommending hot dog toasters and uh, sushi socks and all kinds of crazy gifts. And it was a lot of fun just sharing a joyful moment, infecting Facebook with some joy. Christians should be known for that. Why aren't we? We're, we're known for being argumentative, for being hypocritical, for being judgmental. Jesus would walk up to us in an argument and he'd grab a little kid and he'd bring the kid over and he'd, he'd say, like this little child. Be like this little child. The way they see the world. Live like an elf. Spread some joy. Let that be the virus you carry from person to person. And now the old ways of spreading joy won't work in this season. Like you, you can't walk up and hug strangers currently and maybe you never should have done that. You can't just share a smile. It might have to cost you a little bit more to spread the spirit of joy. You might have to send some handwritten Christmas cards. Maybe um, drop off some gifts on a stranger's doorstep. Find a way to spread some joy. Celebrations can be forced. This is why I don't usually like Christmas. It just feels forced. It feels like people are pretending to be something they aren't. Aren't I happy? Aren't I joyful? The spirit of Christmas, cookies. And that kind of celebration can be forced. But joy cannot be forced. Joy needs to be genuine. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. It, it rises up in us. It, it becomes our source. It's, it's this spring that bubbles over. And it comes from the humility of knowing our Savior, Christ, was born. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Spread some joy. Maybe this year you don't feel like you have a reason to be joyful. Maybe as you're watching this, you've been frustrated beyond all explanation. You can only see the bad in this world and you're trapped and lost in sin. As Jesus said, you have to get rid of sin like a little child. You have to enter into heaven without sin in your hearts and you've tried to cut out those sins. You've tried to live well on your own. You've tried and tried and tried. Good news, your Savior is born. You can't do it on your own. He can do it for you. He can do it with you. He can infect you and become a part of you. He can transform you from the inside out. You see, God became human. He lived and dwelt among us. He lived a perfect life and he died on a cross. That death paid the price for your sins. That blood that is poured out washes away the sins of the past the present and the future. It is once and for all. And when you place your faith in grace, you can be forgiven of your sins. Salvation can come into your life and you can live with pure joy. When you know you've been forgiven much, joy increases. You are a sinner. You can be saved. If you want to make a decision 
for Jesus to forgive you. As, as our, our baptized believers exercised in faith that they have done, they say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I confess that you are Lord of my life. I believe that you died on the cross and you rose again. And I want to live every day of my life following you. If you believe that and allow that to transform you, you are saved. You are part of the family. You are adopted. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You can make that decision simply praying a prayer to him and you can transform your life. And you can let somebody know by going to fb.church forward slash I am in. You can make that change today. Maybe you've already prayed that prayer and you've been a Christian, but you're not spreading the joy that you received from your Savior. You're, you're living a life like a Scrooge, a Grinch, a... <laughs> a Christian the way the world sees them. And you want to start living with joy. You want to become infected with joy so you can spread it to the world. You know what it takes? Humility. To admit. To admit that, that you're not the end all be all. You're not everything. You are less than our God and he is great in heaven and that humbles you and that humility says, and I'm his child so I can live like it. You need to confess your sins again. You need to become new every morning. You need to get in the word. You need to sing loudly for all to hear. Maybe, maybe when you've been worshiping at home, you've been watching Aaron worship because it's embarrassing to sing alone. Who cares? Stand up, sing loud and proud. Spread that joy to yourself. Take the steps to share joy with yourself so you can share joy with the world. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for those who are making a decision in faith, who are responding right now to the, the message of amen, who are saying, I want to receive Jesus as my Savior. I want to pray for those of you who need to inhabit the spirit of joy in your life. Heavenly Father, make us like little children humble enough to admit our faults, where we fall short. Humble enough to admit you are God in heaven and we need you. And then fill us with the joy that comes from that freedom. Every person that is reaching out to you and asking forgiveness of sins, let them experience your grace fully. Let them know they are forgiven past, present, and future, and that they can walk in a new life. Help them to tell someone, to confess that they are your children, that they are a new creation, that they live this new life so that they can begin to spread joy to the world as you did, humbling ourselves before you. Help us to live a life filled with joy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to end with one more little piece of information, another verse that I wanted to share and I was worried wouldn't work into the message, but I think it's powerful for us. You see, this year has not been easy. It's been tough. I mean, even the fact that I'm in here speaking directly at a camera, believing that you're engaging with me online, just hoping that someone is catching the word of God, it's, it's tough on all of us. Things are hard all around, but things haven't always been easy for God's people. In the Old Testament, the Israelites were driven out of their homeland. They were exiled into slavery and they lived there for 70 years and the walls of Jerusalem were torn to the ground and they had nothing left. And then the people were released to go rebuild the walls and they had to start from scratch and they rebuilt the temple and, and things were not as good as they used to be. So even as things were getting better, the Jewish people are looking and going, they're not as good as they used to be though. Things are still hard. We wish they were the way they used to be. I want things to be back to normal. The Israelite people, they're, they're stuck in the rubble of the past trying to rebuild into a new future. And their leader, Nehemiah, says to them in Nehemiah 8, verse 10. Nehemiah continued, Go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a special day before 
the Lord. Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Freedom Valley, I don't care if the world is falling down around you. Don't be dejected and sad, for the joy of the Lord is your strength.